Hello folks and welcome to a new series that I hope will help you and me improve our improvisational skills using familiar songs. Today we are looking at Pearl Jam's Cordroy. It was requested over at Patreon by Anthony. Thank you very much indeed for your support, sir. All of the supporting materials, tab, all that sort of stuff will be available over at Patreon. And I've also sorted out a separate video with a practice backing track. See the link in the description below. Let's dive in. So first off, what key are we in? Rule of thumb is you can either check the first or the last chord in the progression. Let's check out the chord. So Ed is playing just like single note stuff. Ed's got um, E and B. Then for the second chord, A and B. And for the third chord, C and B. But if we incorporate Stones part two, Chords with the notes then are E minor, which is E, B, and G. Uh, e minor with A in the bass is A, B, E, G. And then uh, the C one is C, E, B, G, the C major seven. So it's very strongly pointing to the key of E minor. So we'll start there, right? E minor pentatonic is what Mike uses a lot. Generally, he'll go between this position and this one. You could also play here. Now, a second scale that you could use is the E natural minor scale, which is... That basically is the same as the pentatonic, but you're adding the F sharp and the C. Now let's run through a live example that Mike played at Fenway in 2016, but we're gonna use this to analyze what scale choices Mike made. I'm using the Scran Overdrive and the Evermore Reverb for this one. It goes like this. Stop there, right? So the first part is all pentatonic. Then we've got. So a couple of repeating patterns there. We've got this. You're just letting the chords underneath do the work for you there. And there's this really nice run, changing between the positions. Really nice, right? So it's again, two, three. But here, got the C in there, right? So he's branched off into E minor in that part, right? Next up, he plays some more pentatonic stuff. So you've got this. Couple of bends. He's gone to the F sharp, right? As a bit of a passing note. Let's play that over the backing track. As long as it's a passing note, it works fine, right? Slides down to the second fret. Yeah, you got that going on. You've got okay. 
he goes into some classic mic stuff. So a load of double stops, including the open E. So over the back and that'll be. And at the end of the solo, he just plays. So first off, play your favourite E minor pentatonic licks. Number the accompaniment. So you can do some runs like that. There's a cool little... Something like that. Next example would be... And again. chucked in an, uh, an F sharp there. I couldn't resist. So the easy option is just to play pentatonic licks all day long over that chord progression. That will work absolutely fine. But let's add to that, right? We're going to add in the C and the F sharp because Mike does. But where can you use them, right? Well, let's have a look. Let's just play the C right the way throughout the uh, chord progression and see how it sounds. Oh dear. So that does not work as a target note for the first two chords, right? Fine, I think, if you... If you just suggest it, right? Check the difference out. So I only went to the C there on that third chord. Okay, what about the F sharp? works over all three chords but it feels like it wants to go somewhere right so you could just bend that up and down right half step that vocabulary beyond the pentatonic note and you're just using those two notes just in those positions and just at certain points. Now we can take that one step further again if we consider the A as major okay so let's try it over the chord progression first. That totally works. So now what you could do is try to incorporate some A major chord ideas over that chord, okay? So you could use partial chords for that. So say we have E minor, A, C major seven, right? So that would sound like this. take portions of those chords as well right you know etc okay but that gives us access to another note c sharp yeah because we uh, don't forget we had this chord that one that's what we're playing just before the c and i added the c sharp 
to give it that major tonality. But I'm also going to include the F sharp as well, okay? So have a listen to this. When it changes to the A, this is the target note we're going to go for. Okay? Goes like this. Okay, pretty cool, right? So slowly. So we've got the F sharp in there. Slide to the C sharp. And sticking with the E minor theme, we've got this. You know, so we're using some like chromatic notes here, but but the chord changing, it works. And then maybe we use the 11th fret then as a little passing note. So we'd have. And then you can just put all that stuff together. There's also E minor blue. So if you're just thinking pentatonic, you could just play. Um, So let's do a little E minor blues run and we'll then hit that C sharp target, right? I'm going for that note there. So the lick slowly would be. So it's quite quick, right? So in context, we'd have this. Nice stuff, isn't it? It really changes the dynamics away from just playing that same scale type. So how about something like this? Let's try that one. So we've got some pentatonic stuff in there. Then we go to the C sharp. You know, think A7, right? But then we have that. So we're really playing E Dorian there. Um, and then if that's a bit too complicated, again, go back to these simple chord shapes, right? Try that. Three, four. Again. just go for like triads or arpeggios or something like that just to get used to some chord shapes learn a bunch of other chord shapes too right you can play your your E minor here or here the A chord again pretty straightforward C major 7 is great you can play that all over the place Hello. Uh, or you've got here. So you can use fragments of all of that to build up some rhythmic playing over the top or just make it a little sort of point of reference for when you're, you know, if you might get lost in the chord progression. So an example of outlining those chord changes would be something like this. <laughs> with a little lick on the end, so that would be. So 
I'm going to do some noodling to play you out, but there's a backing track that you can play along to so you can test out all of these ideas. So hopefully it'll give you some inspiration, but also some confidence about where you are on the neck at any given point. See you soon.